Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. Are you ready to give him praise today? Because he's worthy. And for all of you that are joining us by live stream today, we welcome you. We love you. We're so excited to have you with us. And we are going to go ahead and hop into the river together. The rivers of living water that are flowing, we're going to go ahead and let the river of the Spirit take us wherever he wants to go today. Are you ready? Hallelujah.
something out today. Do you believe it? Come on, let's break open those prison doors. today that we truly are everything you said about us everything recorded in your word that you said about us it's the truth and we lay claim to that today Lord we thank you we're, we're so thankful that we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ hallelujah and we're so honored and just blown away that you would welcome us into your family today
worship the one who's called you, called you his very own, welcome you to his family. The one who said about you that which is true, the one who's redeemed you, loved you. When nobody else wanted you, he wanted you. Hey, hallelujah. When nobody else accepted you, you were accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. And we are here today. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. that gives us access access to come before you today to come before you like we belong to come before you like we're welcome into the very throne room of God we're so thankful that we've been made worthy to access the holiest place by the blood of Jesus
before you I bow The veil is torn and the doors will wide I see glory as I run inside the throne room Before you I bow The veil is torn and the doors will wide I see glory as I run inside the throne room before you I bow The veil is torn and the doors will wide I see glory as I run inside the throne room Before you I Let his presence impact you both for life and for eternity today. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise your name this day. 
Hallelujah. Faith Christian Center. Praise the Lord. Praise the praise the Lord. Welcome today. And um, welcome whether you're online or whether you're in the sanctuary. I am blessed. We are blessed because you are here. Because you are here, we are blessed. So today I have uh, three needs that I would like to bring to the body of Christ that the church need, the church community needs. I'm going to bring three needs to you. Uh, they are, number one is um, the media department is still looking for help, help uh, to, for the sound booth. Let me pull that up. Um, the need they're looking for is a few people. Uh, that you want, we want to help you run the visuals doing the service or help running the cameras, all right? So we're looking for help uh, for our online streaming. Uh, you don't need to be tech savvy or you don't need to be trained. They will train you. Uh, you can visit the Vomo app or you can go to the church website at faithccenter.com to sign up. You can also email Mike LaLiberté at MikeL at FCCChurch.com. Also, October 31st, we are doing a drive-through trunk or treat, drive-through trunk or treat. And we need you to help decorate your car and come out and participate. Uh, the su success of this event, the success of the event, really depends on you, each one of you, to, um, which is in the past, this has really been a huge outreach, not only for our church community and the children that are part of this community, but also for our neighborhoods. So we want to make sure that we can transition this event to a socially distanced, fun event. So we need you to participate. Um, I was thinking this, this morning when I was just walking and praying and I was thinking about this event, and what came to mind is that when around Christmas time, we used to pack up our kids and we would go around and look at all the Christmas lights. We would go from, we didn't get out or you know go up to these individuals' house and tap on their door and say, hey, let me look at your lights. We just drove around the neighborhood and we would look at the lights and we would get such great enjoyment out of that. And so then I began to think, ah, oh, we can do that here uh, because there are such creative people in our body. And then I began to think about how, you know, someone could do all these crazy LED lights and be a blessing. Someone could have a chalkboard and students and kids could bring markers and they could do a, a, a collage of writing outside of their car, socially distanced behind this plexiglass of this Lexan. And then I just began to think about Oscar the Grouch, how someone could do Oscar the Grouch with a garbage can and then you could clean your car, you know, right there as part of that drive through Maybe that's going a little far. Maybe that's going a little far. But the idea is that we need you to participate. We need you to be a part. And there's just a wide range of creativity that can be done because of you and the creativity and the artistry that you possess and that the Lord possess has given you. So we just need you to step forth. Also, um, we need you to bring candy. We need you to bring candy. Oh, sorry. The deadline for signing up is actually Tuesday, October the 31st. So if you can go on to Vomo, volunteer to decorate your car, uh, you can call Miss Debbie, uh, Debbie U, uh, at the office. You can email her and just let her know by this Tuesday, October the 31st, that you're in and that you're going to be decorating the car and you've got some ideas that you want to do and you've got and you want to uh, be a part of it. So. October the 31st. Now back to the candy. We do need you to bring the candy. Uh, there is a bin outside located um, in the foyer for you to bring. Bring it. We would like individually wrapped pretzels, individually wrapped kale chips, individually wrapped organic dried fruit roll-ups, all that. Okay, I'm salivating, I'm sorry. I'm salivating over that. Uh, 
actually, we need you to bring the good stuff. All right, quote, quote, the good stuff. The sneakers, Hershey's anything, Hershey's whatever. Hershey's chocolate this, Hershey's chocolate with almonds, Hershey's chocolates with almonds and sea salt, uh, Hershey's with peanut butter, whatever, just peanut butter cups. Bring the good stuff. Bring the Skittles, the Twizzlers. Bring the sugar. Bring it on. All right? We need you to fill up because when those kids leave that drive through uh, trunk or treat, they're going to get a bag of treats of lots and lots of candy. All right? So make sure you bring it. Um, and you can start bringing that right now. The foyer, like I said, in the lobby, there is a container for you to place that candy inside. Um, thank God. Praise the Lord. We, uh, last week, last week we launched Children Grow. Last week we launched Children Grow. And just as a reminder, make sure you, uh, drop off your kids before you come into service and, um, approach the screening station, sign them in using the Kick Check app. And then at the end of service, at the end of service, you're going to go right to the same uh, location that you drop them off, and then that's where you're going to pick them up, all right? Um, we have some events coming up in October. We have several events coming up, and uh, they are the first one Saturday, October the 18th. Saturday, October the 18th, that is next Saturday at 1 p.m., Royal Rangers will be starting. Now, if, you've, uh, your, if your son or your young man has uh, participated in Royal Rangers before, they should have received an email from the staff uh, of Royal Rangers, and uh, they know who should be or what group of boys are going to start on next Saturday. But if you're new to Royal, Fam uh, Royal Rangers, you can still participate. We are, they are accepting uh, new families to become a part of it. Uh, you can sign up in the lobby uh, for Royal Rangers. You can also go to the church website and click on the Royal Rangers uh, webpage that's on the church website. Also, October the 24th at 9 a.m., fired up. Men, fired up, all right? Um, the men's group here is hosting a live stream event. They're hosting a live stream event in our sanctuary. Uh, it's called Fired Up uh, with guest speakers, uh, Tony Evans, A.R. Bernard, and others. Our registration is open right now, so you just need to go to the men's event page on the church website and register there. It is a free event. Also, FCC Forum coming together. Part two will be Wednesday night, October the 28th. You will need to register for this family, FCC family event, so that we have enough seating. Registration is available on our website at fccenter.com. Praise the Lord. It is tithe and offering time. It is tithe and offering time. I'd just like to remind D2L and Jumpstart uh, that after prayer, uh, you can dismiss yourselves. Uh, this week, I was uh, reminded of, uh, a friend of a friend of a friend of mine. A friend of mine. She was telling about a testimony that. Uh, when the wind and the rain came through this past week, they had a huge tree that dropped down in the back of their yard, just a huge tree. It did not hit their house, thank God, but it was all over the, 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 their yard and everything. It's something that they need to take care of. She called in someone to take care of it, and they... Um, you know, the price was just, was just huge, something that they didn't want to, whatever the, the reason is, that they did not like the quote that they received. So she went to work teaching, and uh, when she got to work, she heard that one of the support staff, one of the support staff at her school had, lo had had a fire, and everything in that home had been, they had lost everything. But that person was still at work supporting the school. He was a Christian. He had always supported her as a Christian spiritually. And then, so the Lord had placed it on her heart to really give a substantial offering 
to this uh, support staff. And she didn't, you know, she was like a little bit concerned that she didn't want to do it. But then she, she said she obeyed the Lord. And the Lord just, um, she went to the bank at lunch hour and she got a substantial, the way she explained it was a substantial amount, uh, uh, a substantial amount. And she gave it to the support person and they were just so overjoyed by it. But then later on, she got a phone call and the phone call was for, from her house. And it said that a neighbor had brought the chainsaw over and had cut down the tree. They had cleared it out. They didn't even leave the wood there. They had cleared out the wood so that because she was obedient to God, God took care of her. And Lord, right now we come to you in prayer, Lord. We just thank you, God. We just thank you, Lord, that you take care of our house, that you take care of our property. Lord, and we want to be obedient to you, Lord. We want to be obedient to you, Lord. You provide shelter for us when we don't even have shelter, Lord. You provide it for us, and we thank you, Lord. We ask you to bless these tithes that we bring into your storehouse here at Seekonk, Lord, so that your kingdom and your work will continue to grow and multiply. And Lord, we ask you to receive these offerings, receive these tithes, which we willingly, we obediently, and gratefully give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. D2L, job start. Good morning, church. I am not George to tell us. He was supposedly going to be right here right now. So we've kind of made a quick change up. We learned the other day that he needs to follow some quarantine directives. So keep his family in prayer. They're doing okay. But that was uh, something we had to change up quickly on. Thank you, worship team, today. Wasn't that amazing? That was awesome. And Verda, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just want to come behind what Verda was saying uh, with the drive through trunk or treat. It is one of our biggest outreaches, has been, and it doesn't need to stop now uh, due to COVID or whatever. Um, so we really would encourage you to get involved. Uh, again, we're doing this in a social distancing way uh, where the cars will be placed separately, you know. Um, but we want to be not only to our church community, some normality and celebrating Harvest Fest with church with this uh, drive through but also the neighbors, they really look forward to this. So that would help too, if we could kind of step up on that. So we do need help. That deadline, as I believe Verta said, is October 13th, uh, when you need to get your uh, sign up to, to let Debbie know that you can uh, be part of the car, decorating the car, whatever it is, sign up in foyer, visit Vomo, or just call the church office or email Debbie. But we need your help to do that. So I said, George Zatellis is not here. Many of you know who he is. Uh, he's him and his family established new missions many, many moons ago. I just at least want to give him a bio because he's not here. So um, we're down in the Dominican and in Haiti. They've been running the missions for many years. His parents started, his whole family's involved. Uh, really doing amazing work uh, down there where they really have built a great schooling system down there for kids in Haiti and the Dominican, and they're training the next leaders to lead these nations. So it's really exciting what they've been doing for years. A lot of churches have come behind them, including us. We've been supporting them for many years, and we can only thank you guys for that because your giving goes straight towards that. Uh, George is a clever guy, an anointed businessman as well. He's even doing a, um, a camp up in Worcester County on the summers for the last, I think, 10-plus years. Uh, his family had about 20 acres, and he said, well, let's make a day camp out of this. Let's meet the needs of families in the area to have them go to a day camp during the summer because, you know, as we all know, there's a lot of working families in, in our culture. 
So I was able to tour that at one point with my parents a few years ago, and they were like, I mean, he gets anywhere from 600, 700 kids a year. I mean, it's busy there, swimming pools, archery, everything, um, really exciting place. And then when we came in just to tour the facility, they were doing a big worship service, a big chapel. And I said right away, I said, George, how many, this isn't my message, how many, how many churches have come together to put this thing together with you? And very quickly he responded, he says, well, Chris, probably on every given year, only 80 to, 80 to 90 percent of these kids have never walked into a church. I'm like, this is phenomenal. This is outrage as we know it. And the parents very much know it's a Christian summer camp. So I'd pray for, praying for George and things like that, pray for camp, uh, I think it's Woodhaven, up in uh, Worcester, Mass., New Missions, doing a lot of great work, but uh, just need to see him busy. But he gives us his love. Unfortunately, he wishes he could be here, but he's not. So now you're stuck with me. I think I say that a lot, but you're stuck with me. So here we go. Well, I want to jump. Well, let's start in prayer because that was just an anointed worship service. Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for this beautiful gift of today, Lord. And as we open up the word and, and the message is coming through, just give us ears to hear. Lord, only you, the Holy Spirit, knows where everybody is in this room right now, and you will meet them where they are. We can be confident in that. And we give you all praise and glory for what you're doing here at FCC. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to start right off. Can you, um, I think Doug, can you uh, put on one of those news sites? Don't worry, everybody. We're not going political or anything. I may have to get out of the way. Whichever one I gave you, there's a point to this all along. I asked him just to go on a few news sites live now because I wanted to now, live, now. If that's too much, we'll just go with some still photos. Five, four, three, two, oh, almost. There we go. All right. So this is a news station, right? This is today. So, or actually it's a still it looks like. Okay. Why don't you go to the next one? All these websites are pretty busy, huh? Busy looking, even local. This is our good friends at WPRI. I mean, there's not a lot of blank space on these news sites, right? At all. What, what, what are they portraying here? That's good, Doug. Thank you. I don't want to read headlines, but what, we already know headlines. and things, But what are they portraying when you visit each one of these sites? What are they doing? They are providing something, information, but what they're really providing is a message, a message, whether we know it or not. So we can get messages on our phones now, in our email, uh, pretty much 24-7, we can get messages. Question is, what message? What is the message that you're getting in these news outlets? You know, church, excuse me, news outlet's been around for a long time, and there's much things to report, but they even take things and repackage the same thing and look at different angles about the same thing, talk about the same thing, but they're providing a message. Some of you may say, no, it is just information. No, it's an information that has a potential to affect you, good or bad. That's a message. That's a message, Right? And we're getting it everywhere. We deliver a message here Sunday and Wednesday, good or bad. We do. Everywhere you go, there's messages. People are drowning in messages in the times we live in right now. Never mind social media being a super highway of messaging. And at some point, this message can affect our mind. We know some of this. 
our soul, and eventually, over a period of time, our, our physical bodies, if left unchecked. So messages are everywhere. The title, somebody did it, is Be the Message. I have hijacked this title from a book I read about three years ago, all right? But what I want to talk about today is really not the book I read, but there is some stuff in that. But we, with all the messages that is being out there, shouldn't we have our message that's just as much out there as the world's message? I know we know this, but in our crazy, busy world, do we remind ourselves of this daily? I want to give some books out. This is Be the Message, devotional. Again, I'm not speaking of the whole book tonight, excuse me, today, but I had a few copies, and, and they don't do good sitting on my shelf. So would anybody read this and actually follow it? I'm going to, uh, let's see if we can get social distance. There you go, Joanne, beautiful. Anybody else I can throw at? Gemma, sir, right there. Thank you. All right. So Be the Message is the title today. So now you're saying, all right, Chris, is this another evangelistic discussion? No, this is a lifestyle discussion. So there's nothing to, I mean, it has to do with reaching our loss, but this is part of our Christianity, our lifestyle, the way God and Christ wants us to be. So it's gonna, today I'm going to break this down in four parts. What is the message? How to prepare to be the message? The opportunities that are out there to be the message? And then finally, higher altitude. You'll understand that when we get there. So the founding scripture for today is this, John 1, 1 through 5, 9 through 14. If you want to turn there, take your minute, take a minute. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. Keep going. He was with God in the beginning. Though him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Thank God for that. Keep going. The true light that gives light to everyone has coming, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. You guys are getting a hint who we're talking about. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decisions or a husband's will, but born of God. The world became f- the word. Here's, here is the key of everything. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said he would come after me, has surpassed me because he was before me. I really want to focus on, of all today, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The message version says, the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. This is something we can, and it took me a while to understand this. That's fine. You can pull that down. It took me a while to understand that Jesus is the word. I know we say that, we know that, but he is the living carnation of God and who is the word. So the who being Jesus It's hard to grasp at times because you know what? When I say the word, what comes up? You're looking at this right now, right? The Bible, right? That is what we know as being the word, and it is to some degree, but it's only half of the picture of what the scripture is saying. God had to reach us where we lived. 
Hit you where you live is an old term. So Jesus had to come to the flesh to represent the Father. And we know some of this, but grasping some of this, you're going to understand the rest is why Jesus can say, go be my disciples, because we'll understand. A man that could reach us through humanity and not even a religion. I'm going to step on a few religious toes today. They may heal. A man who could set people free doing the Father's will, make disciples at the same time, and cause those disciples to be leaders to spread the same good news to the earth. That's Jesus. Imagine if the Bible... I'm stepping on some religious toes. Imagine if this word was in the manger in Bethlehem and it wasn't a baby. Think about that. You won't get mad at me when you listen further. I'm not discounting this at all. This is power and life in this. But think of that. Why didn't God say, I'm just going to birth a book down in Bethlehem? People are going to read it, and then they'll be transformed, and then they'll they'll worship me, and everything will be hunky-dory. No, he had to have some baby come in the flesh. Reading this book, it's God-breathed. We know that. Gaining knowledge and understanding of the heart of God is one of the main reasons, but it's only a book if it hasn't affected our lives. It needs to affect you first so you can affect those around you, right? You have to. The power of the book is real, but we need it to come off the pages. Jesus didn't carry around the latest translation when he was doing his ministry. He did not when he was engaging with people. Daily, how he could do what he was doing is he was surrendering to his Father's will. Simple as that. And then he would hear the message from his Father to do what his Father wanted him to do in his environment. That same submission is available for you and I in 2020, 2021, and beyond. That same submission that you can do as a Christ follower to the Father is still in potential of your heart to do that as a Christian. Religion beacons another sermon to inspire and change. But Christ desires you to be his example and reach the hurting and the lost. We need teaching. We need what we do here Sunday and Wednesday. But if we don't exercise it, cellulite creeps in, creeps into the soul, especially in these busy times. So what I'm trying to get to some of the heart is this. There are messages every day, online, on your phone, on the highway, turning the radio on, going to work. And most of them are pretty darn negative, right? So we need to be the opposite of that in this world. We, knew, we know Christ died for us. If that wasn't true, he wouldn't have came here in the flesh and moved into the neighborhood instead of becoming a statue in a sanctuary for somebody to be worshipped. You guys are all excited this morning. His love is greater than any disappointment, discourage, desire that we, only ha- that we have for ourselves. That is the good news of the gospel. And that is the heart of the message. The world is trying to live their lives to find purpose without God. Unfortunately, some of Christianity is to blame for that. Because we haven't showed them a relational God. We have not in some cases. It's critical. Newsflash, we know if I talk to 10 of you right now, all you know you're going to die someday, right? We do. It's that thing, 10 in 10 doctors said they would, you know, who's that survey thing they do on commercials? 10 in 10 doctors said, you know, taking this pill will cure you or whatever, whatever. Well, 10 people if I talk to right now are knowing they will die at some point. It ain't on our forefront, that ain't a word, but ain't ain't on our forefront, but it's there. And as believers, we should be more urgent than ever to know between that dash, unfortunately, on a tombstone, what purpose are we bringing to those around us? The message is not always verbal we're talking about. It is not. 
Many of us know Francis Assisi and his famous quote, preach the gospel at all time and when necessary, use words. There's no victim here who's a Christian that can't say they can't be qualified to be the message. I didn't go to Bible school. I've only been saved for a year. We can all do this because every morning we face to live in a life where our audience is. God Almighty is asking you to be the message. If he's trusting us, why can't we trust him that he's trusting us? I know that was a circle right there. Why can't we? If he has trust in you, trust his trust in you, right? Being in Christ is key in this, but also being in your humanness is equal key to this. Again, we are representing a relational God. As Pastor John said over a few times, the word became flesh. He had to be born in the flesh so he could take on anxiety, feel, as, feel for us as humans to some degree. But I would even pose that we needed him to be human so we could relate to the God that we look up to. Ephesians 2.10 says, I don't know if you have that. Excuse me. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I think it's talking about being the message. Without him, we can't do anything. Without us, he won't do it. He won't. So continue to grow in the word in your Christian journey. That is monumental. But have an expectation that you are to represent Christ in your daily life. A message is truly not a message unless it's sent out, right? Otherwise, it's just captive into your mind. And this is the good news. Don't hold on to it. John 12, 47. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Judgment is not part of our message. For some, that might be hard. I remember... Uh, Excuse me. I remember, um, and I won't promote Saturday Night Live, but way back in the <laughs> uh, 80s, I was kind of addicted to Saturday Night Live. My dad laid hands on me. I'm doing a lot better now. But there was, there was this old character, Dana Carvey, called The Church Lady. Anybody remember that? The Church Lady, yeah. She had her little talk show in a so-called church. It was Dana Carvey, dressed up as in the 70s and 80s, and all she would do is have hosts on that would never probably walk into a church. So she was setting them up already. And they would, she would ask these innocent questions, and then she would start leading into her judgment. Isn't that special? And then they would, she would listen some more. I think I hear Satan. She was very judgmental, and yes, it was a little funny skit, but we don't need another church lady representing Christ right now. We do not. Your message doesn't need to be preachy or be a speaker, but just relational conversation as a human being talking to another human being that just has, happens to be redeemed in Christ. So they say, okay, Chris, well, okay, I know Jesus died for my sins. You know, I need to talk more about it. Da 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 da. I have no voice. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a speaker. I'm none of that. I would say to you, you already have your voice. It is your unique expression of Christ to the world. You already have it. Just exercise it. That voice comes from your past, past experiences, victories, defeats, and even what you're going through now, believe it or not, in all our perfection. It's your voice. It's part of your story. It's part of this message we're talking about. There's that saying for those who, well, you know, okay, I have my voice, but I just don't want to step out. You can always do more than nothing. Chew on that. 
You can always do more than nothing. A powerful statement. It's not a participation award statement. It's powerful. You can always do more than nothing. And the more you do, the more God is in you to do that. Your voice is what people need to hear that can relate and to possibly receive from you to build hope in them. It's your voice. It's your voice. Really, the Bible, and I'm not going to get struck with lightning, the Bible is the translator from God for you to be transformed through your humanness, humanity, excuse me, to share the good news to one another. That's pretty much it. So I want to talk about three important things. How to pro- We know what the message is. It's Christ came to the earth and mixed with your message of your life experiences, your victory of what God's in your life and your testimony. That's c- the component of the message. Talking about how to prepare for this message. This is not an evangelistic exercise. This is just your lifestyle of what you do every day and the people that are around you. But it really starts to be aware of three things. Compassion, commitment, and character. Danger words for many. Compassion, commitment, and character. And you don't need to know that be walking in this 100%, but you need to help in your prayer life of God growing you in this as you continue to practice being the message to the people around you. Compassion is so important. My prayer frequently, and this is why I choke up when I talk sometimes, you know, not being a man-man, I just sometimes I choke up when I'm talking because my prayer frequently, and it's nothing special I do or intelligent I am, is to pray, God, break my heart for what breaks yours. Whew. Sorry. If you can do that, it will work. God will fulfill that promise in your life. We need to be compassionate when we are looking around us and our surroundings of what people are going through because we can be secure in him through the word of God. It doesn't move us left or right, but God was very compassionate, especially Jesus, when he sent his son, right? Compassion. It's very important. Some of the problems I had in the past of why God was you know, encourage me to pray that, break my, my heart for what breaks yours, was because being the business guy I was in the past and things like that, I would always look at people where they should be. Where should you be right now? Didn't have much compassion when I looked that way. God says, that's okay, you can look that because that's potential and that's where people need to be. But I need you to look at where they are now. Because where they are now is probably where you don't even aren't even needing to, are needing to be at this point. But that's where I can reach them. So pray that. Break my heart for what breaks yours. Romans twelve four. Do we have that? Okay, that's all right. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. And reach out to those who are angry. Ooh. Isn't that timely? There's enough of all those people around us. Well, a little lack of rejoice. One more time, Romans 2, 4. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. And reach out to those who are angered. The goodness of God is what leads people to repentance. Not yelling and protesting your Christianity or the self-inflicted goodness you may have in yourself at times. Leave that up to God to yell about repenting to the lost. He could probably do a better job than you in some cases. Talking about compassion here. Position yourself with compassion. Ooh, this is a tough one for some. It was for me, even for your family, (laughs) right? Be compassionate towards your family. Again, we're setting stages to be the message in everyone's life that's around us, lost, Christians, everybody. Peter 3.8. Finally, in all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate, and eat some humble pie. Peter 3, 8. All Christians deal with issues. You know, when we came to the altar, we didn't, we didn't come because we just picked up the brochure out there of the timeshare brochure called the Streets of Gold Resort. 
All right, and we're going to buy into it, and we just run right up here. No, we came up to here because of the goodness of God, and we felt a touch in our heart because he loved us. But compassion is part of your message. It is. Some of you might be dealing with anxiety as believers, depression, loneliness, whatever, things like that. And most things, and even Verda kind of mentioned earlier in her example of giving, when we're going through something as a Christian, we may be asked to give something to get out of it. Okay? So if you are going through that, those are real things. But God may be putting some opportunities in front of you that you don't realize to step out. And it may be, in this case, to be the message to somebody around you that who may be depressed as well or have anxiety. Step out, he'll step in. Next word, so we were talking about compassion. Commitment, ugh, gets worse. Make a commitment to be the message. Not to go to the corner of ignorance and arrogance and stand on a soapbox and start preaching to everybody, but simply make a commitment that the Holy Spirit lives inside you and you will be more sensitive to your surroundings. The culture has redefined commitment. We know that. All in the name of individuality and things like that. Uh, Here's a quote I heard once. Um, There's a difference between interest and commitment. When you're interested in doing something, You do it only when circumstances permit. When you're committed to do something, you accept no excuses, only results. How many Christians are just interested? Raise your hand. Psalms 37.5, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. Step on out, like we just said, and he'll step in. Proverbs 16.3, commit your work to the Lord, and all your plans will be established. When you make a commitment, we all know this to anything as Christians, the enemy is ready to question that commitment, to test that commitment, even to the degree that you may trip over yourself and walking through, walking out a commitment, just make it part of your dance and trust in that grace of God that's there to carry you along the way. The reality of good news and being the messenger being the message, is going to pop up daily in different forms in your life. You know, um, like I back to, I said we've never really represented a relationship, relationship, relational God to most of the world. How many, probably a majority of ladies, Yankee candles, Yankee candles, they like Yankee candles. I know it's kind of on the East Coast. So if Yankee candle made a scent, follow me for a minute, and the scent was called Christian commitment. What would it smell like? For some of us, would it smell like an old, moisture, dried out pew in a church? I would hope, I know I'm more learning that I know what my scent would be if I was a, what do they call, a mixologist or something. I would hope it would be the beautifulest smelling flower on the top of a mountain combined with a main coastline with all the salt air, with a campfire, and that's my scent of a commitment to Christianity. Commitment to Christ is not a boring event that we walk out every day. It's an actually adventure every day if we just see what's in front of us. Funny quick story having to do with uh, Yankee Candle. Don't throw a purse at me. So we were about to go into one the other day. We never just, um, I noticed when I'm out with my wife, we don't say, let's get up and go to Yankee Candle. There just happens to be a store wherever we're near. And we say, hey, we might as well go into Yankee Candle. So this happened a few weeks ago. We're approaching the Yankee Candle, and there's like four ladies standing out front in the entryway. And I'm like, yes, because, you know, with many of these retail stores, they can only have a certain capacity due to our pandemic, right? So I'm like, honey, as we're walking close, I'm like, look at the line to get in this place. We have to be somewhere soon. And she kept walking as determined she is. And we walk closer to the people. And they, oh, they separate like the Red Sea, parting the Red Sea, and let us in. Well, like, this isn't going the way it was supposed to go. And I said, aren't you waiting in line? I said, no, we're planning our purchasing strategy. So, so two things were hitting my mind. Oh, great, I'm about to um, encounter this cacophony of smell. 
I thought they were waiting in line. And the other thing was like, why, how do you do a purchasing strategy before getting in? But a little, but we went in. I don't think we bought anything, which was perfectly okay. Yankee Candle, commitment to Christ is not dead, as I said. It is alive because life is what we live. Life is what around us. Commitment does ask for responsibility, but also provides provision in Christ. I'll say that again. Commitment asks for responsibility, and that's what we usually shy away from, but also provides provision in Christ. That commitment made me to be committed every day, every morning you get up, that I want to be the message to the people around me. What am I committing to again? I'm a Christian, yes, but being the message to those around me, as I just said. Here's the old commercial. I'll give you a commercial break here. Some of us remember this. There's this old thing like, okay, if you were dragged in to the court of law, could somebody prove that you were a Christian? You ever heard that? You know, if the trial came and they convicted you to be a Christian, would there be enough evidence for you to be convicted? You can't use exhibit, exhibit A or B of a nice shirt with a Christian cross on it or a bumper sticker, but we can only prove it, can only prove it from your relationships with the witnesses that come in. How many of us would be convicted? All right, back to the message. Some of us have made these commitments to shine the light more in the darkness. Almost to a point where they, <laughs> you've heard the term, burn the ships, all right? It's an old Mexican Cortez. He came in, burn the ships. You know, it's another message here, but... Some of us need to burn the ships in our harbor and come into the shore. We're, we're sitting on the shore watching these abandoned ships that we've made commitment, that we've, that we've abandoned our thinking and our mindset and our spirit, and we're still on the shore looking at those ships that we've abandoned. And we need to burn them sometimes and come closer to the shore, what God is creating us to be and do, and just continue to move forward no matter what gets in our way. So commitment isn't easy to make, but you need to do that. All right, we'll leave commitment alone. Character. God's gifting in you is part of the gift that you have that makes room for you, but your character is what keeps you. It's, it's if you want to say, hey, look at the science. That's a big term. There's the science. All right, there's the science. Over the years, a lot of Christians in public ministry or different things, how well have they showcased their character? good and bad, but when I see that as a lost believer, what originally comes to mind, like, oh, those hypocrites, you know, or something like that. Character is really only seen over time. It's never really at a glimpse to say, I know somebody's character. So when I'm talking about this character. I'm talking about how is your character towards the people you see most or know, whether it be your coworker, your family. But it's important to take appraisal of how your character is going. It really is. Jesus talked about it wasn't just a positive idea from somebody. Jesus delivered the message that really honed in on character, which was with the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 3. Blessed, and we know this, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, and they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirst for righteousness, for they will fill they'll be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He's talking about character. You'll be blessed if in these areas that you actually hold to your standards of what Jesus is saying. He was telling his disciples. So he even talked about character. People will follow further and listen longer if you have a good character. Plain and simple. I've learned from my mistakes. Let's say that. All right? I'll be humble. <laughs> uh, one quote that I, there's two quotes here. Our character is what we do when we think no one is looking. Here's an even better one. Helen Keller said this. Character cannot be developed in ease. Only through experiences of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, ambition inspired, and success achieved. So it's really important if I want to be the message 
to kind of, not that I'm 100%, every day is a good day, some can be bad, but we have Christ in us and his grace will carry us. But the reality is, be aware of the compassion in your life, do you have it? The commitment in your life to Christ to give it out, and the character, how's that been going on in your life? So those are the three things. Equally important, and probably before these three things, is your morning prayer time. So you can hear his voice when he speaks to you throughout the day. That is so vital because it gets noisy out there, as we know. Christ took the time to commune with his father daily so he could hear from the father to tell him what to do. He didn't always just turn to whatever chapter he needed to. He was in connection with his father all the time. In your prayer time, pray for confidence, not essentially boldness, but confidence and awareness because that's where God can use you to be the message. Here is very important in growing up in a word of faith church. (laughs) Very important. We are not fighting for victory for this between Satan and God, right? Jesus already won the battle, right? The overall darkness battle. But we are coming from victory and proclaiming victory to those around us so we can help suppress the darkness in this world. Slightly big difference. Some of us are too busy trying to win battles that have already been won. And if we're in that state, how are we going to witness and be the message to those that are even our brothers and sisters in Christ to help bring them along or even the loss that we're encountered every day? Very big distinction to know. Another, so your prayer life is so key to all this because it makes you sensitive to the spirit of where God may use you this day. Not from a pulpit, but from your daily lifestyle on where you are with your audience around you. Another important thing even to pray for too is, Lord, let my heart beat as a servant's heart. It has to be. Servant's heart. Jesus spoke about this in a servant's heart in Mark 10, 42 through 45 in the message translation. Again, Mark 10, 42, 45. Jesus got them, got them together to settle things down. You've observed how godless rulers throw their weight around, he said. And when people get a little power, how quickly it goes to their head. So he was even sarcastic. It's not going to be that way with you. He's talking to his disciples. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not to be served, and then to give his life away in exchange for many who have been held hostage. So Jesus, in the essence, knew he came to lose to some degree because he had to be a servant. But when you're a servant, it's actually a gain because then God can work through you. How, how much more people can you reach with a servant's heart? Because that comes out in your attitude, your vocabulary. We pray that on a, on a team staff every week or mostly. You know, Thank you for allowing us to walk in this building with a servant's heart. It's so important. If Jesus can do it, we can certainly do that. I mean, he came from heaven, and all we did is come from our mother's womb, which is important, but it's not equal to heaven, right? If he can come down to that. So prepare in prayer each day for those things and say, Lord, use me to be the message around me. So the number three, opportunities will come each day. They will. Am I allowed to quote Shakespeare in church? I'm going to do it, so. This is about opportunity. Pretty rich here. There is a tide in the affairs of men which taken at the flood leads only to fortune. Omitted, all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in misery. On such a full sea are we now afloat and we must take the current when it serves or lose our venture. Pretty powerful about opportunity and the tide coming in and taking that when it's in front of us. In Ephesians 5.16, so yeah, I'll get back into the word. Sorry, Shakespeare. Ephesians 5.16, making the most out of every opportunity 
Why? Because the days are evil. How more is that now than ever? How more is that than ever when there's all these messages going around? Sometimes I think at the end of my day, it's like, oh, Lord, thank God you only put 24 hours in that day. And then some days they'll be like, Lord, I just needed the 25th hour. Whatever attitude that is, there's still opportunity in that. There's still opportunity for you to be the message. We live in a fallen world. We are not part of it, but we are in it. So organically, there will be opportunity when you are always the opposite message. There will if you interact with people. God is not looking for polished and pronounced people. I mean, look at me. To walk out his representation on a daily basis. He takes where you are and connects it to its surrounding and where you live. The opportunity of life is happening all around us, but it's so important to be in that movement, that moment, and be sensitive to your surroundings. Your environment is your catalyst in being the message. A lot of us can say, the world just needs to change, and we know this. It, just start, it starts with us. It starts with me. It starts with you if we're looking for the world to change. The message is like our seed to the world, and your environment is like a field. And the Spirit will help you find that fertile ground if we're praying every day and being sensitive to that. Being the message may be in more depth conversations you have with one person to another. It may be a simple smile along the way. But God will find the fertile ground. It could be somebody in an elevator that you've seen twice in a week. Like, all right, maybe God, you're putting this person on me. And you turn to the person and say, are you a Christian? Do you go to church? No. You say, do you know how much God loves you? And wait. Drop the mic. Wait. What does that speak to people? They have, if they don't verbally answer it, they have to answer it in here over time. What if it's an atheist? I'm an atheist. It's all right. He still loves you. He really does. It could be praying for somebody in the grocery store outside because God's placed you in front of somebody. If you're praying, you'll see it in your morning prayer. And certainly with our brothers and sisters that are even in this room and those Christians that we know, this isn't just the lost you're being the message to. This is to our brothers and sisters because we all need hope at some times. We really do. We need the encouragement and we need uh, the help and sometimes people need to see a relationship human being with a relationship God in order to walk that out a lot better than just opening the best help book to get through it. The Holy Spirit will find the fertile ground for you. It will. Some may say, Chris, what about Christian tracks? Remember those? You are the track. You are the billboard. You are the message to this. You are. At work, getting coffee, pumping gas, F -f family dinner, you know, whatever. You are. Be the message and sow the seed. I mean, look at the headlines. If, if I actually read those that we just came up today, I mean, yeah, they're informative, but gosh darn it, most of them are pretty depressing, right? People are looking for hope. You have it. They need non-negative messages through a humanity of who you are to point to God. And unfortunately, you need to be the message that people have hurt you too. Message of forgiveness. Somebody who's cut you off physically or cut a heart or your mind or disrespected you or did something. We need to do the opposite of what the world does right there to be the message. So many of you have those choices daily. Some of you may say, walk out here and just say, that was a good message, that was a bad message. You have a choice. Continue in the comfort of some Christianity, which some do. Or go further in what for what God has for you. Because, see, when we influence others the way God designed it, we're influenced as well. It's just an organic nature that God has designed. 
not being a preachy message is the message like we're talking about, but just being in your humanness and relating to one another to make a connection. I didn't say this earlier. Let me see if I can articulate it correctly. In this busy world we are in, this kind of goes back to another sermon. In a busy world that we are in, actions speak equally as, say, equally as much as our words because of our limited attention spans. Think of that. So your actions of holding a door open for somebody. Again, different depths of a message every day. You're planting seeds. Saying hi to somebody in the grocery store that looks like they need a high and a high five. Being sensitive to that. But your actions are key in that. So number four, I had titled Higher Altitudes. What are you talking about? Everybody's been in a plane. Everybody's been in a plane in a stormy day, right? And we've heard these examples before. So if I go to TF Green tomorrow, it's supposed to be raining and some storms, and I get in TF Green, and I get in the plane, it's still raining, the storm's like, oh my goodness, is this plane going to make it? But then, as we start to elevate in our takeoff, right, we get up to the clouds, we get beyond the clouds, sunshine, sunshine on my shoulder, John, not even John Denver sunshine, but real heavenly sunshine that you will see. And then the plane moves a lot easier too, Right? When you practice the message, eventually God will trust you more and more and you'll notice that you're flying at a higher altitude in life than you ever have before. And not out of an ego, look where I am. Look, Mom, no hands. You know, not where I am, but look what I can, I can go through things and I'm not as affected by things. So I can be the message. And the, the thing that can guarantee that comes through, and again, I am not there yet, but I know people are doing this that are practicing being the message every day, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, there is more freedom than they've ever had in their life because they're not bound by people, themselves, any bondage, because God's grace continues to support that. And if you're looking to live at that altitude, this is the only way to be the message, have your output be equally greater than your input that you get reading a Bible. The Bible is vital, important. It's inspired God's word. It's the foundation of this church and all the churches around us, and I'm not discounting that. But what I'm saying is it came to change our life so we could change those around us, and that's what Jesus did. He was in the flesh being the word to change the life around us, to share the good news. And speaking of the good news, I want to show a quick video, maybe four minutes long, that I believe highlights the good news better than I could articulate it. Can you play that video? What do you think when you hear the word gospel? Do you imagine a monk praying or a saint walking around with a halo over his head? Or do you imagine that family who live in your street who never smoke, drink or swear on how annoying it is when their lawn is always perfect and their children look like tiny angels who floated down from the golden streets on high? Well, it actually doesn't mean any of that. We looked it up. The word gospel just means good news. It's not a religious concept reserved for holy people. It's just fantastic news for absolutely everyone. No exceptions. Good news for broken people and those who have been abused by life, that no one is beyond repair. Good news for the outcasts and the ones who don't fit in, that there are no outsiders to the love of God. Good news for the ones who are burned out on church and hurt by religion, that Jesus is a person in love with you, not an institution that makes mistakes. Good news for the ones who find prayer boring, the Bible difficult, and just aren't very spiritual, because grace is much bigger than that. Good news for those who have everything they want but still feel empty. Because satisfaction and joy doesn't come from cash or a nice house or a big fancy car. It comes from knowing why you were made and the one who made you. So, now for the awkward question. If we have such unbelievably good news for absolutely everyone, how come people aren't lining up to hear it? How come people roll their eyes and keep walking when they hear street preachers yelling it at the top of their lungs? How come the local gospel mission isn't bursting at the seams like the Apple store at Christmas time? 
I think we're maybe telling it wrong. You see, Christians aren't perfect. I'm sure you figured that out by now. As a wise man once told us, if a Christian gets disconnected from Christ, you're just left with Ian. And this guy, Ian, can be a real nasty chap. He's Mm. proud, mean, and more interested in the rules than people. Ian makes it sound like the gospel is only good news for people who are just like him and don't challenge any of his assumptions. Ian used the gospel to put himself on a pedestal so he can point out other people's flaws from up there and feel better about himself. At his worst, Ian tried to twist the promises of the gospel to prey on the vulnerable and to take their hard-earned money. And Ian even had the audacity to turn the gospel into campaign slogans and political propaganda to gain power for himself. We need to wrestle the gospel back off Ian and make it sound like good news again. Because if it doesn't sound like good news, it isn't the gospel and it isn't Jesus. You see, if religion doesn't lead you to Jesus, then it's a train you don't ever want to get on. It's just not enough on its own. We need to reclaim some of the amazing things that Ian has hijacked and make them gospel again. Things like the word evangelical. Now, don't be scared. This word is not political ammunition. It's not a pre-warning of an impending seals pitch. It just means carrier of good news. Isn't that beautiful? We don't have to peddle a religious product or bang the drum of any political party. We just carry good news without agenda. You see, here's the human problem. We are all aching for real, meaningful, joyful life. But let's be honest, none of us have found it on our own. Life is not some philosophical idea that's always out of reach. It's a person, and he is reaching out to us. You may have heard the saying that the world will never understand the good news until they understand the bad news. But in a world so filled with bad news, fake news, tragic news, I just don't know if that's true anymore. I don't know if they can hear it. It's not that we don't believe in the problem of sin and the brokenness of humanity, but friends, we have a way better story to tell. We have a cross. We have a resurrection. We have a coming king. We have a rescuer and a savior who can put all things right. We are telling the story that Jesus is and always will be the real good news. That idea might be too simple for some or too naive for others, but that's the amazing truth. That's the gospel for absolutely everyone, Mm -hmm. including Ian. Yay! And that's good news worth sharing. Don't be an Ian. (laughs) That was from a band called Ren Collective that they did. But just to sum that up, we have good news in our possession. We are part of that story, and you being the message of that is what the world needs in this time. Not any program, not any evangelistic track and things like that, just to the people around you being who God has made you to be and sharing that story, sharing that story. So again, you have the option. To be comfortable and continue to hear these messages that we're hearing every day. We can't stop that. Or actually be part of a new message, a better message to those who need to hear that around us. Your humanness is not your liability. It's your asset in this. It absolutely is. And having that relationship with God is what points to him through your humanness. So again, this Bible is how we grow and learn. But if it doesn't come off these pages and into our heart, we're not really reading the Bible and we're not giving its full effect of what God did. Otherwise, we're being an Ian almost. (laughs) So let's pray because I am done. Hopefully you got something out of this. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Lord, I know for some this may be a message that may be challenging for some. Lord, because some may think they're in a position where they've always been the message, and some have maybe not, where they know they need to be, Lord. Lord, you are not a God of condemnation, but you are a God of grace and amazing love that continues to pick us up. Lord, the world needs to get this message, not in the old conventional ways, but in the ways through each and every one of us and sharing our story and the good news that we know to share with others because it's changed our life it came off the pages of the Bible and have transformed our life Father Lord continue to have this prayer for those who dare break our hearts for what breaks yours Lord 
and let us see the opportunities around us to be your message. And as we continue to do that, strength will come for those who are hurting right now or have lack in their lives. Let this be some of the prescription for your cure for them to step out and you will step in. And Lord, let's not just say this is for the lost, but this is for our brothers and sisters around us equally, Lord, that we are here to come alongside them when they're hurting, Father God, and be the message to them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If any of you have been watching today or in the room, and I didn't even invite you guys watching online, I apologize, but I'll talk to you now. If you're online or in the room, and you would say, okay, good news, I've heard the word before, but I've never experienced it. I've never, I've never, never experienced this relational God that you just talked about that is the part of the message. I would encourage you to don't shut that TV off or don't leave this room until you know that you are one with God and have a relationship with Him. He loves you so much. Amongst all the craziness, His love is consistent. And it's unconditional. Jesus came to die on the cross for your sins. And that act of love releases you to live eternity with him, but not even that, to live victoriously here on earth. Where all these things that are going on, you go through but are not affected by them because you, you know who you are in Christ. And I would just want, like you to pray this simple prayer. If you're in the room, you've never prayed it before. If you have, pray it too. But it really is just a simple prayer of confessing the Lord publicly and out loud. And he is going to come into your life when we're done. It is that simple. The good news is that simple. Sometimes we complicate it. So pray after me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for, for loving me so much that you sent your son to die for me. And that I am part of this good news. Lord, wash me of my sins. Make me a new creature in Christ. Allow your love to direct my path, Father God. And I surrender to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you said that prayer first time online, give us a call in the office on Tuesday morning, 508-336-4110. The next important thing is to tell somebody you did something, and we want to send you some information out. So please do that. If you're in the room, visit our cafe at the inn. We want to pray with you real quick and get some information. If you don't have a Bible, we are going to give that to you. Thank you so much for coming out tonight or today. I keep thinking this is nighttime. And please take this good news outside of this room and be the message. Thank you very much. Would you stand up with us and as we get ready to go? Let's go ahead.